the morning huddle reports are, are really important. Um, I know of one case where a lady needed a mammogram and, um, you know, you just don't have time for that. I'm working, you know, that kind of thing. So she come in for something else and the nurse asked her about it and kind of talked her into it, you know, it's important. And they found an abnormality. And, uh, you know, so she did, was not aware of it. So it either, you know, saved her life or at least let her know that there was something going on. So it, it really does make a difference. So for the, the people that aren't in the exam rooms, you need to keep in mind that this is really applicable. It really does change lives. She's a mom, she's a sister, you know, she's a, a wife. And that report changed somebody's life. And I think that sometimes that's the disconnect that there is. It really does matter. It matters if the date is correct, you know. It matters because you have a pretty report and it's right, but it matters in the room too. And uh, that's just, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, we're working with a number of the health centers around a, a, with a grant funded project um, focused on hypertension and diabetes. And we have one provider who is just an amazing, I mean she's just an amazing individual. She cares so much for her patients and she, um, it, you know, really, it, she's very young and she's all about the data and, and, she, and she does amazing things. I mean, it, in many ways, it, it's sort of, I worry about it because there are things that really a provider should not have on their plate because they should be spending their time seeing patients. But, um, but she is, you know, looking at her hypertensive patients who are way out of range and calling them in and doing group visits that have been enabled um, by pulling out that group of uncontrolled hypertensives and actually using text messaging from within tracks to, um, you know, with the add-on of care message to bring people in for group visits that have been just working really, really well in their health centers. And I think for her, it's been just tremendously empowering to be able to have that, that level of view into her patients and to say, you know what, these 10 people, like, we got to figure out what's going on with them. And, and I, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want to overclaim, but we may, you know, she may have saved some lives that way. I mean, it really, it's really, there have been some very moving, moving stories about patients who were, who were lost to care and were really not in good shape and who she's been able to bring back in because she can see, see who they are. It's really exciting to see the, um, the folks within the health centers who really get what the data can do for them be empowered with these tools and with this data and, um, and, and, and just to run with it. So I actually just very recently had a really neat experience where uh, one of our relatively new providers, she's fairly new to the organization, but she's, she's a nurse practitioner, but she's not new to being an NP. And she called me recently, which I always get excited when providers and members of the care team reach out proactively to you know the population health team. She called me and she said, I heard, you know, I was looking at my colorectal cancer screening numbers and I'm just not really happy with where they are because I, I know that's important for my patients and I want that to get better. She said, and I heard that, that if I asked you, you could actually get me some data. And I said, yes, absolutely. What data do you want? She said, well, um, everything. And I said, well, this is, I started to get excited. I said, this is, this is fantastic. You know, just give me a list. And she said, really, you know, you could, you could, she said, could, could you give me a, a list of, of all of my you know, UDS measures and how I rank against the organizational average so that I can decide which you know, care measures to focus on? I said, sure. She said, wow, that's awesome. Could you send that to me every month so that I can keep track of my progress? I said, sure, absolutely. She said, and could you, could you help me with my care gaps? You know, like every three months, could you send me a list of the patients that I saw in the last three months that I forgot to order colorectal cancer screening on so that I could have my care team do, do proactive outreach? And of course, I'm you know, doing a happy dance, right? The, this provider is getting excited and she's actually getting excited. And I said, sure. She said, really? That's amazing. I can't, she said, I imagine that the only way we could accomplish this is if I asked my MAs to you know, manually go through each patient's chart and look and see. I said, she said, we're already using the huddle report. That's nice, but we can actually close care gaps now and I can measure my performance. And, and it was really, really exciting for me because Seeing someone who was new to our organization, had never really experienced the power of tracks before as a provider, 
how she was getting very excited about how data and tracks could help her improve her patient care. And so over a one month period, of course, you know, the wonderful thing about data is we want to see, you know, okay, I'm really excited. She's doing something. We've implemented something new here. Over a one month period, her colorectal cancer screening rate increased by 13 percentage points, which is huge in one month by 13 percentage points for her patient population, purely because she was able to have the data of knowing where her rate was, wanting to improve it, and then asking for that list of patients that needed the care gaps and just her doing that proactive patient outreach.